This is a Porsche 911 on steroids. This is the 2022 GT3 track focus. It's lighter, it's faster than the 911, and today we're gonna show you around. Let's take a look. First thing you'll see is that obviously the color is awesome. This is called Gulf Blue, but that'll cost you about $5,000 extra starting price of this car is about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars but i'll show you that with porsche it's very easy to start getting more expensive everything is an add-on and everything <laughs> quickly goes up in price let's start off with the back this is what porsche calls a swan neck wing and basically the whole purpose of this is to create more downforce by creating a larger surface area in the back, right? So you have more air coming through here, nothing splitting it or anything like that. Makes the car have more stability, more control on the track. The entire outside of this car has been completely renovated and redone compared to the previous models. So obviously you have GT3 and Porsche, and then you have this tail light going all throughout the entire back. And with the GT models, you have the exhaust pipes in the middle as opposed to on the sides. And this thing sounds incredible. I'm gonna turn it on in just a second. It sounds bonkers. When you put it on, this thing can rev all the way to 9,000 RPM. And when you're flooring it, especially in a tunnel, I mean, the sound is, is <laughs> it's crazy. This right here is an active rear diffuser. If you don't know what that means, basically this rear diffuser will move on its own. And this rear diffuser generates four times more downforce than the normal 911. It'll stick to the ground that much more. All right, let's check the side up here carbon fiber roof as well that's about three and a half thousand dollars extra if you want that but take a look at the car from the side so what you have are 21 inch rims on the back and 20 inch rims on the front but if we get in closer you'll see some some nice little details okay the first thing is that you have this super cool uh, blue ring and this is seamlessly integrated into the rim I mean if you touch that you cannot feel anything then you also have center locking wheels so you can change wheels as quickly as possible <laughs> Quickly, quickly. You have ceramic brakes in the back. The ones in the front are exceptionally massive. These brakes are 16 inches wide. And when you drive this thing, you feel it because you have so much control of the car. You have so much grip and so much brake power. One more thing I want to mention is that the biggest improvements is the front wheel suspensions. They've done what's called a double wishbone. And basically what that does without getting into too much detail is it keeps the wheel flat when doing sharp turns so you get more grip, added grip. This is the first time ever that a 911 has a double wishbone at the front. So yeah, big deal. For me, I just like driving around in this thing, having a little bit of fun. But if you're on the track, these things matter. The entire front has been completely redesigned compared to the older models. And what you'll notice is a huge Porsche strip going down the middle and you have these new vents also in the front. This is basically just for cooling. It comes in through here, comes out through there helps cool everything a little bit. And also, this front splitter can be completely changed manually. These headlights are blacked out. That'll cost you an extra <laughs> couple thousand dollars. But yeah, it does look amazing. In fact, you can actually spend even a couple more thousand dollars and get a little ring on the outside to match your paint job. But you know, we're talking big baller stuff here, you know. Now let's have a look at the inside. You go around through there, go through there, and I will unlock the doors for you, ready? Take a look at the door handle and... Oh yeah, pops out. You have these carbon fiber bucket seats as well. These will cost you $5,000. Actually can adjust them automatically as well through here. Yes, there is a manual lever here to push the car up and back, but you do have this automatic as well to be able to move the seat up and down. Right, in the back you have a roll cage. Whenever you have a roll cage inside of a car, you know that you're in for a driving experience. Let's call it like that, right? One of the first things I noticed when I got into the car is I said, oh my God, this is stick shift. Yes, it's stick shift. And then I'm like, I look closer. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not stick shift. What is this? So this is basically just a gear selector, but they just brought this back because whether you get this car in manual or automatic, it still will feel to some extent like a stick shift. The way that this works is you have this button up here. You just press this down and this you can select. You know, the car isn't on right now, but you press this down and then you can select and then you can even flip this to your left, upshift and downshift with this lever as well. I have to admit, I've been driving this car for a couple of days. Yes, it's a lot of fun to drive. You have to want to drive this thing because it's not comfortable at all. That's my opinion. It's meant to be enjoyed on the track, but this is not the kind of thing that you go on a long drive for. These bucket seats, they lock you in. It's a very rugged ride. You feel, you feel every single bump and everything. And if you have anything, let's say like you have a phone, there is almost no space at all to put anything, right? You have this little space right here 
you put your phone here, it goes flying. I mean, you're turning, this phone goes flying this way, flying that way, whatever. This is about enough storage to maybe store a coin. Maybe you can store one penny maybe a couple pennies. And in the back, you know, you have, okay, this little uh, Porsche design, very elegant, very nice. You think, yeah, I'm gonna get even more storage. Boom, <laughs> what is that? This is like enough, enough space to store a debit card maybe. So you have enough space inside for a penny and for a debit card. And that's about all you get. Over here, you have a hidden compartment, which is a cup holder. And, you know, I was thinking like, uh, man, why does the passenger get a cup holder? I want one too. Open like this do that this is your cup holder and now I have a cup holder okay if you want to lower the window you know it's not just within a like a comfortable reach like you have to pull back like do something like this you know and, and start pulling like that you know it's it's not a comfortable experience at all but again that's not what this car is designed for also I have to say that even though I love the stick shift type of gear selector it's pretty uncomfortable to like, you know, if you want to adjust anything through here, you have to put your hand around and you have this thing kind of bumping in to you. This is your volume. You'd want to drive straight and you want the volume to be somewhere here. Instead, it's down and you have to pull back a little bit. Uh, it's not that comfortable. The car, it doesn't have an on off button like over here, over there. Uh, it is a Porsche, so it's all the way. Let me see if I can, I'll grab that and uh, show you. Oh yeah, and that comes to life. Once the car is on, there's no way to keep this car quiet. It's just loud. You can make it even louder by putting it into sport or into track mode. Put it in neutral and... That sounds good. What you'll see is that you have a new gauge cluster in this model. You have a physical gauge in the middle, tell you your uh, RPMs, and then you have these digital gauges flanking off the side of it. And I think that looks super, super nice. So the interior has been completely redesigned. You have Alcantara leather everywhere, you know, on the steering wheel, you have it above you, you have more leather here. You know, the inside does feel expensive. Also, something that I noticed is that the stitching is super nice. This is called Shark Blue. And that's the color that comes with the inside of the car. So it's actually like a different tone from the outside. The outside is golf blue, which is, you know, this kind of light, light blue. And then here you have this much darker shark blue, which is also super nice. One more thing is that when you look to the left, you know, you're driving, you look to the left, you have two buttons, right? This is obviously the hood of your car. And then you have this button, which is very obvious, very, you know, right there. And you'd think that this would pull up the back, right? But when you pull this, go to the back and take a look at what this does because I couldn't believe it when I first did this. I thought I was doing something wrong. When I pulled that and I saw that this comes up, that's it. I was like, okay, I'm probably doing something wrong. I started going on Google and YouTube to search what I was doing wrong. No, no, that's it. That button right there does this, you know, for your coolant and for your oil. It seems like a very dramatic button to have, very close, very accessible to you for something as little as this. You cannot access the, the engine on your own. And the other button, pull that, that opens the front. You gotta find that little secret button. All right, there it is. All this is carbon fiber, by the way, and you have a lot of space in here. I mean, to be honest, uh, I saw Matt Watson do this. You know, gets inside, do a surgery test. Yeah. It's not bad. It's actually much deeper than it, than it looks. You know, from the outside, you think, oh, you can't store anything here. You can almost store one full surgery. I mean, this is, this is pretty deep. This is pretty good. Uh, and I gotta be honest, it's comfortable. I think this is more comfortable than the passenger seat. <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. Anyways. All right. Well, let's take it for a little drive, yeah? Let's manually put this into first, you know? Clutch down, just kidding, but it does feel like that. Um, all right, all right. You can actually flip this to the left, have this in my car as well, and now you can, you know, upshift and downshift. You also have your pedals over here. La -la -la. A little bit of AC, a little bit. All right, so this thing is a four liter naturally aspirated straight six that produces 510 horsepower and can do zero to 100 in 3.2 seconds and you can already hear how that sounds like we're not even uh pushing it one second i'm gonna put it into sport mode you want to hear how it sounds good 
me too. It's like a go-kart. You have so much control of your driving and the steering wheel is so responsive. Like honestly, uh, you just turn left, right? It's like, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like you're on a go-kart, but this thing has so much more power. So even though that this only has 510 horsepower, which doesn't sound like that much more, because there are other cars that have a ton more, but you get the 3.2 seconds, zero to 100. So what Porsche is basically like, you know, teaching us is that it's not all about horsepower, it's also about engineering. All right, back into the tunnel. All right. <laughs> That's crazy. Even now we're turning, but the grip is so, it's like, uh, like I really, I really do want to test it to the limits, but yeah, you know, we got to drive responsibly because we're on the road. But I feel like this thing on the track would be an absolute animal. Like it would be so much fun to drive this on the track. Anyways, that's the GT3. What do you guys think? Have you guys ever driven one? Would you guys buy one? What do you guys think? Let me know.